Hey, welcome back to another episode of How to Do Stuff with Nick. I'm your host, Nick. Today we're going to talk about how to do stuff. I know, super ex exciting title. I'm going to answer in this video a question that I got on Twitter, and I actually am pretty excited to talk about this because I'm happy about the workflow that I found, and I think it's about the most efficient price per dollar workflow that you can get on any content creational type device. Now, this is specifically for my kind of workflow. Um, I do a lot of videos, a lot of podcasts, a lot of notes, a lot of uh, pages, documents. Um, this isn't really for uh, people who are just gonna, you know, <laughs> go on, go online or surf the web or you know, do school projects. I mean, this is definitely good stuff. Um, but just, just know that's the direction I'm coming from. I want to show you guys how I create content. Now, let's take a step back. I'm currently on an all Mac workflow. Um, I, I just love my Macs. They're, I just have three of them sitting here, and I actually need to get rid of them. Anyone want to want to buy this? It's, it's I'm just sitting here not doing anything. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I used to create all of my content on a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and it's a very capable device. This this iPad uh, was wonderful, and it had all of the things that I needed it to do at the time, uh, but it had one limitation, the third generation one, not the one that I just showed you, the third gen iPad that I had for a while only had 64 gigabytes worth of storage which meant that anytime I wanted to do a podcast, I basically had to delete everything off of my iPad, leaving about 40 gigabytes of available space on the 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and then uh, load in my video files, my audio files, edit them in LumaFusion as fast as possible before too many render files were generated, and export it as quick as possible. And, uh, and so, yeah, that was definitely kind of a stretch. Sometimes I couldn't even edit the shows on my iPad, because no matter what I did, I couldn't clear out enough storage because iOS was caching things or whatnot, so I'd have to like wipe the entire device and start over again. Or sometimes I even edited them on my iPhone, which had a little bit more free storage at the time. So all that to say, not fun memories. And when I went ahead and uh, uh, upgraded my iPad, I opted for a one terabyte model because I knew if I was gonna do more video podcasting on my iPad, I needed more storage. I couldn't handle just the 64 gigs bouncing around with just a few little itsy bitsy bits of containers of data. Um, I needed more space because any kind of video rendering, any kind of content creation is gonna create a lot of render files. And render files are really tricky to deal with because they can kind of be invisible. Um, LumaFusion honestly doesn't do a very good job showing you where those are and allowing you to clear them out. Even deleting the app doesn't necessarily get rid of the render files. So I was constantly erasing my whole iPad. Even my terabyte iPad Pro would eventually fill up with 800 gigabytes that would just vanish into thin air and it would just be like, oh, oh, your drive is full. Sorry, you can't put anything else on your iPad. It's like, I have a terabyte. What's going on? So when I finally upgraded from the iPad to a full-time Mac mini workflow, I had other Macs at the time but the iPad was still my favorite content creation. The M1 chip totally blew me away on its speed versus dollar. And uh, so I've been using the M1 Mac Mini ever since. And uh, this is the workflow that I've established. Now, when I went ahead and bought the Mac Mini, I knew that I would want more storage, especially for Final Cut. Final Cut is a it's very storage hungry program. Everyone on the internet says you need at least two terabytes to edit with Final Cut. And I totally agree with you. You need about two terabytes to edit with Final Cut. However, if you're using a Mac desktop, you don't need all two terabytes to be inside the Mac. If you're gonna use an, a Mac laptop, like the MacBook Pro, or maybe like a MacBook Air, and you want it to be nice and portable, then you're gonna need that storage inside of the device, 100%. You don't wanna decrease the portability of a device by having to plug in extra hard drives or you know peripherals, and it, it just decreases the portability of it. And so, that's not really what you want to do with a, with a laptop. So when you do buy a Mac laptop, you do pretty much have to go all out on the storage and get however much you think you'll need and hope that your use cases don't change and you don't get, a, hold, get stuck holding a bag that's too small for whatever project you want to throw at it. However, with the desktop workflow, you can plug in I.O. into the back of a desktop and have it not move and not be inconvenient and it just is there, but that storage is a lot cheaper almost as fast and just about as convenient. So I wanted to show you guys, this is the hierarchy that I currently use and we'll step through exactly what files are taking up what, uh, what space. Currently my Mac is pretty dirty. About once a week I'll go through and clean it, uh, getting rid of all the files that I don't need and archiving the ones that I do. I haven't done that in about a week and a half. So it's pretty messy right now. This is about as messy as I've ever had it as far as unneeded files just floating around on the system. 
So I wanted to show you guys what it looks like with all of my mess, and then I'm gonna clean it up and show you guys what it looks like cleaned. So this is the uh, this is the current setup here. I have, uh, as, you th as you can see here, I have three hard drives, plus a couple of uh, SD cards that float around from time to time. So I guess we can probably plug one of these in. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Got the uh, SD card plugged in. Um, the, I have two SD cards uh, that I kind of swap between, so uh, they're both 256 gigs. Those are kind of not necessarily computer storage in my opinion. Those are more just like for the camera to operate and uh, so, but they are, they are part of the storage here. So I do have about two terabytes worth of storage. I guess I do have a terabyte hard drive here sitting here too that's not even plugged in. Maybe I have more than that. I don't know, I'm not a data hoarder, am I? I might be a data hoarder, oh well. I think we're gonna just deal with that. So um, you'll see here I have three main hard drives. I have the Macintosh HD, the external HHD, and then the inter external SSD. These three hard drives are kind of three different levels, in my opinion, as far as uh, what I'm storing on them, what's being used on them, and, and what, what, what their purpose is in life. And so <laughs> the Macintosh HD, you'll notice there's only 256 gigabytes. I opted for the base, base, base Mac mini. I wanted to put it through its paces and say, what can I do with the cheapest Mac in the world that you can get the M1 chip with? And that this Mac mini has been absolutely stellar because I've been able to plug in some IO here and some, some other drives. Um, if you're planning on using Final Cut with just 256 gigabytes, good luck. You probably couldn't even edit a six minute video um, because the render files, files would just balloon out of control and fill up your entire hard drive. So would not recommend you uh, put your Final Cut library on your uh, Macintosh internal HD. Uh, you should do what I've done and uh, move all of the larger data onto other pieces of, uh, of, of hardware. So all that I'm keeping on that internal SSD are the uh, operating system, the application files themselves, and anything that needs to be directly dealt with one of those programs. So anytime I'm exporting a video or uh, importing a video, those are typically going into that hard drive first. So that is the, that's, that's the storage that I keep the most clean. I am fairly careful and picky. Obviously right now I've filled it up quite a bit. I have about 100 gigabytes that I do need to go through and get rid of basically. But I still have about 80 gigs available, so I'm not feeling like cramped at this point. Um, but you can see uh, my apps take up about 14 gigs. Uh, documents take up about 12 and a half. Um, mail, five, and there's some other small stuff like content creation system. You can't change this, and sometimes it's indexing and just balloons in size. And so sometimes that system file can be pretty big or pretty small, just depending on what's going on. This is pretty average, about 25, 22 gigabytes. Um, of just system and then I have this other folder here uh, which we'll get into in just a second and then obviously I have uh, about a, a 90 gigs available. So that's the highest tier, that's the, gonna be the fastest, it's gonna be the easiest to use and it's the most integrated into the Mac. Step down from that is the external SSD. This SSD's sole purpose is to hold uh, one file, which is a pretty big one. It's the uh, Final Cut library file that I use. And I and I delete these and, and redo them so often, that's why it's just untitled, because I don't bother naming them, I get deleted so frequently. But basically, uh, this SSD is only there for Final Cut to read and write data to. And uh, I don't mind it just filling up. Sometimes it'll fill up all 500 or you know, 499.9 gigabytes of, of available storage. And I don't mind just nuking that drive and starting all the way over because uh, the data on here is not permanent. Something that you need to realize if you're gonna use Final Cut or any pro video app, app like DaVinci Resolve or any of the Adobe software, um, there's a lot of render files involved. So anytime that you make a change to the color grading or maybe a, a camera shake adjustment or something, it's gonna render that file so you can play it back smoothly in your timeline, um, but it's not actually uh, needed. <laughs> it, it can take like a, a two gigabyte file and turn it into about 50 gigabytes worth of data if you edit it long enough. Um, so there's a, there's definitely a balance towards like keeping your render file small and uh, and being able to quickly and easily edit your timeline. So basically the external SSD is just there for the untitled Final Cut library, which gets nuked uh, probably four or five times a week. Um, the last the last hard drive that I have is a one terabyte external hard drive. Actually, I do have two of those, but that's the one that's currently plugged in uh, as I don't use the other one very frequently at all. Uh, basically what this is, is this is the archive hard drive. Anything that I want to kind of throw away, I, I would normally throw away if I was a minimalist, but I have this space. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just archive it. 
um, I'll put on I'll put on the external hard drive. Um, so for example, I have uh, archives of all of the different shows that I've created. So for the tech podcast, for example, I have uh, uh, the actual MP4 file that I uploaded to YouTube for each one of those shows. You know, just in case something happens. I don't know if I'm going to keep this data all around, but it's here now. I have the hard drive, so I just threw it on there. Um, and also, it's a good to just kind of keep maybe like some. Uh, uh, I have some royalty free uh, data here with, uh, you know, like just random, random things um, that I don't really want filling up my hard drive. Like, I think this is about 100 gigabytes worth of uh, royalty free videos. Um, so I don't necessarily want those on my SSD. So I just, I just, I just toss those out into the hard drive and get to them whenever I need it. Um, so this is, this is a nice way to, to hierarchical, this is a nice way to hierarchically organize your data from the most important to the least important. And then obviously there's a component of just getting rid of what you don't need. So uh, that's a perfect transition because I'm going to go ahead and clean up this Mac and uh, we'll see how it all looks after it's nice and squeaky clean. And we're back. That was really quick for you. It took me about 20 minutes. So now I have everything cleaned up. All the files that I wanted to keep, I went ahead and moved them to that external hard drive and I'm ready to do the most satisfying part of cleanup day. And that is emptying the trash. Right now, if we look inside of the trash, um, there's 60 gigabytes worth of trash on the hard drive itself, uh, internal hard drive, but then on the external hard drive, you'll see we have our library file on the external SSD with just about another 190 gigabytes worth of other random files. I also cleared out some files on my SD card because I was in the cleaning mood. And so we're gonna hit this one empty trash button and just watch all of our storage go to, you know, all of the storage. So let's uh, do the most satisfying thing here and uh, watch both of these things happen at once. I'm gonna empty that trash in three, two, one. Yes, I'm sure. Ooh, boy, look at that. All right, so we are super duper tidy and clean now. Look at this. We have uh, just about 150 gigabytes available on the internal hard drive. We cleared out the entire SSD and uh, we cleared out almost all of the SD cards. So I think we are uh, pretty much good to go as far as uh, how clean things are. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about in this, and I know this is primarily a uh, content creation type workflow video, um, I did want to touch on what the actual files are sized and how big they are. So maybe you can gauge this if you have a slightly different workflow than with what I'm doing. So Final Cut, the actual application and uh, the plugins and the uh, everything that's inside the application file for me is about 3.1 3 gigabytes or so. Motion is about two and a half. DaVinci Resolve is two. Uh, you can go down this list and uh, read them if you'd like. You probably want to switch up the resolution here because I know these are really small. I can't make it any bigger. I'm sorry, the text isn't going to grow. Um, yeah, but other things to note here, uh, see Zoom, I saw Zoom on here, it was a bit smaller than I expected. Yeah, Zoom was only 64 megabytes, 65 megabytes, so that's not a not a huge deal. So yeah, this is uh, this is all the stuff that's uh, currently on the application file um, in the documents folder. Um, looks like I have, I think mean, I can get rid of some of this stuff. Yeah, that's, that's Sam's video from a couple weeks ago, we can get rid of that. Um, oh, I, I, this is the uh, screen recording from uh, earlier today. Uh, like earlier today is in like the first part of this video, so we can't get rid of that just yet. Uh, this is Mike from, uh, I think that was EV a couple days ago, so we can probably get rid of that. It's one of my videos from a while ago. Oh yes, uh, I know what we're about to get into here. All right, so let's let's go ahead and uh, clear that out because we don't need Sam's video. I don't know how, I don't know where that went. So I'm glad we're going through this. We also don't need Mike, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Um, but I think all of these guys are good to stay. I don't mind keeping these guys around. It's so small. Um, mail takes up about five gigs for me. Um, depends on how many uh, mail accounts you plug in. I only keep one, my iCloud account, plugged into the mail app, mail app on my Mac. Because again, primarily when I'm sitting down at this Mac, I am doing Final Cut work. I'm not uh, doing, you know, <laughs> anything else. I'm not watching Netflix or uh, doing anything else. I have other devices for that. So um, I pretty much just have my iCloud account here on, but I have 
on other Macs, I do have you know 30 or 40 gigs going to this mail folder, which unfortunately you can't really control, save for uh, removing accounts off your computer and deleting the uh, cached files or cached emails that are there. Um, so then we got messages is taken up a little bit here. Uh, I don't really have much music. Uh, this is another good one for content creators. Uh, just your base logic library instrument package, which is just the base one. I'm not a huge uh, logic person, so I just have the base one and you can download other ones uh, as you need them. Um, but just the base instrument library is one and a half, 1.6 gigs and the Apple loops. If you use the loops in logic, uh, they are about a gigabyte. So keep that in mind. Um, I did at one point on, actually, I think it's still on this computer. Give me a minute. Ah, yes. So uh, on this computer, I have the full Logic uh, instrument library downloaded, and it's almost 60 gigabytes at 53 gigs. So I guess 55, almost 55 gigs um, with that Apple Loops. The full version of Apple Loops is two gigs. So if you're looking, if you're a big Logic person and you're just wondering what the base Logic file size is, um, it's going to be your uh, Logic uh, application file, which is one 1.3 gigs, plus your... Um, instrument library, which the full version is uh, 53 gigabytes, plus the Apple Loops, which is two gigs, which I do have those downloaded on another computer that I don't really use because I'm not a huge music person. Um, but yeah, so that's that's how much those are. Uh, TV, it doesn't really even look like I have any uh, TV shows or anything downloaded this. Again, this is pretty much just a work computer. Um, so can you get by with 256 gigabytes? I definitely think so. Um, I have what I would consider to be like a prosumer workflow. Um, you know, I do record a lot of videos at 4K. I edit a lot of content, hours and hours, about 10 hours or so every week worth of content. Um, and somehow I'm able to do it on 256 gigabytes with my half terabyte SSD and a couple other uh, larger hard drives. So it's totally doable to get by with a smaller amount of storage on a desktop because it's pretty easy and convenient to just plug in extra drives. I have uh, taken the uh, SSD that I used for my Final Cut library and plug it into other Macs, like my MacBook Pro or my MacBook. And uh, if you open up the uh, Logic, uh, what are they called? Logic Project Files. Um, if you just open that up on your MacBook Pro, then it will open up directly from that hard drive. So you can do the same workflow on a laptop if you want to. Just keep in mind it's not going to be quite as portable because every time you want to move it, you basically have to unplug that hard drive, which is going to make Final Cut freak out. And so anyway, I would not recommend it on a laptop, but for a desktop, you cannot beat price per dollar um, with having the smallest internal hard drive with a plethora of other larger SSDs or even a RAID array if you want to even go that far. So anyway, that's how to do stuff. I've been Nick Answeeney, your host. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.